Hello everyone, uh, Dan Calloway here, and uh, I want to show you something I'm uh, working on right now. Um, and uh, I've got it set up in uh, Microsoft's Hypervisor Manager uh, on my Windows 10 Pro machine, and it's called Zential Server. Uh, Zential 5.1 is what I've got set up right now. And basically, this is a, a brand new Linux. I don't have brand, brand new, but it's new to me anyway. A Linux uh, small business uh, server uh, where you can uh, create your own standalone network at home, uh, either physically or virtually. I'm choosing to do it virtually for now. Or you can um, also um, uh, have it implemented so that it is integrated in Active Directory if you've got an Active Directory domain and forest set up on a home network or a corporate network. Um, there are two different flavors. Uh, there is the commercial edition, which you have to pay for, obviously, and that's for somebody that you know actually owns a small business and wants to uh, have a, a network set up in the small business to integrate even into Active Directory. Um, or you can do what I've done, which is uh, download the development edition of the software and uh, and for you know for testing purposes. Uh, but it's fully functional, so. Let me go ahead and log in. Uh, I've got it set up for a username of Data Pioneer. I just grab it here, and the password's already embedded. So I'm going to click Enter and take you out to the dashboard. Uh, Zential Development Edition 5.1. This is a great piece of software. Um, it's a great server. Uh, we're looking at right now the dashboard. It shows that the time is uh, Saturday, August 25th at 3.21.11 Eastern Daylight Time 2018. I've got a host name of Zential-VM for Virtual Machine. It's core version 5.1.1. I've already updated it. Currently have no updates. Uh, here's the system load, which looks really good. The uptime now is only six minutes. Uh, it says zero users, but that's beyond uh, the user that I'm currently logged in as. Um, here I've got two interfaces set up. I've got ETH0, which is up. It's an internal, and its IP address is 172.25.119.161. That's a reserved IP address for private LAN, and it's being issued by DHCP. Then I've got a static address set up as well. Uh, it's up and internal. This is ETH1. Okay. Um, I've got a lot of services set up in here uh, that I haven't even started looking at yet, um, but I've got capability for FTP, VPN, uh, it can be my own certification authority for issuing certificates. I've got a firewall here, I've got DHCP, Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, DNS, uh, Domain Name Service or System. Um, I've got mail uh, that I can have here as well. So if I had multiple users here on this network, on their own boxes, uh, you know, linked to my network here with this server, uh, I could send them email, they could respond to it, et cetera, et cetera, internally to the network itself. I've got file sharing capabilities set up, domain uh, set up as well, users and computers, software management, host of logs that you can access, network system and module status, I'm going to go down to system and show you here under the general. Um, I've got administrator account. Data Pioneer is the only one set up. I'm on the 8443 interface, which is what we're currently on here on localhost. Uh, so it is port 8443. The host name is Zential-VM. The domain that I'm, I've got set up on this server is mshome.net. Okay. So the fully qualified domain name for the machine that I'm on, on the server itself, would be zential-vm.mshome.net. Okay. Um, I can halt or reboot the system here uh, by doing either halt or reboot if I needed to reboot the system or the server. I can do a date time change. I've actually currently set up uh, with NTP, which is Network Time Protocol. I've got that enabled, and so I can't make a change to the time because it's established by the NTP servers. I'd have to turn that off in order to do it. And I've got three servers in the server pool, 
that are going out and keeping the heartbeat, if you will, of this network server, uh, you know, set up, it, you know, in good time with the uh, machine itself. Okay. On the network side, click network. Uh, let's check the interfaces. You can see here that I've got ETH zero, which is one interface. It's static, and that's the IP address I signed to it. 172.25.119.161 with a net mask of 255.255.255.0 which is a class C network okay um, also I've got ETH1 set up and each ETH0 by the way is the gateway all right so the gateway is 172.25.119.0 I've got ETH1 set up with DHCP issuing IP addresses here. Uh, let's check some other things. Uh, services. Here are all the services that are currently running. Um, DHCP, DNS, FTP, uh, HTTP, HTTPS, uh, incoming mail. I go over to page two. I haven't really configured all of these so they may not function totally but I'll be doing that as time goes on. Uh, mail submission service, NTP, network time protocol, Samba, which is the file sharing for domain, uh, SMTP outgoing mail protocol for Dovecot. I've got uh, Secure Shell, okay, SSH set up, and uh, Trivial File Transfer Protocol, with, that is not secure. And then finally, the Zential Web Admin interface service that's running as well. So let's go back over here and get out of that. All right, let's come on down. Um, under Users and Computers, you can see here in this interface, uh, let's go to Manage. And you can see here that I've got the mshome.net network domain. Computers underneath that, if I click that button, it should, uh, if there's anything out there, it would populate itself. Groups, Users, we've got the Administrator, I've um, got myself set up as the administrator with a, uh, a domain and a password, I mean a regular password set up in that in domain. It's currently, the quota is currently disabled, but I could set up a quota if I wanted to. I've got a domain admins security group set up as well. And uh, I've got that as the designated administrators, okay. Um, haven't uh, set up anybody in that yet. All right. Uh, since I'm the administrator, it doesn't really matter. Guests, I don't have anything set up in guests yet. The schema admins, this is the interface that you would use to interface with Active Directory Domain Services in an Active Directory Domain Services in Windows. Uh, so, for instance, if I had uh, Windows 2012 R2 server uh, set up with Active Directory Domain Services with a forest and domains, I could join that actually with my Zential VM um, domain controller and it'd be a part of that Active Directory domain. Okay, so uh, let's go on down. Uh, under domain, I've got the uh, Zential VM server being a domain controller with a mshome.net being the realm, the NetBIOS name being mshome, the NetBIOS computer name being Zential-VM and then the description being the Zential server. It's actually drive letter H, okay. Um, got file sharing. I haven't really set that up yet. I haven't added any shares. Mail, I really haven't done anything with this yet either, but I'll just show you that there's that the interface as well under general. You can set up for uh, smart host authentication. You can do FQD and host name for server mail name. Uh, so an email address would be at the fully qualified domain name. It would be data pioneer at um, uh, you know zential-vm.mshome.net okay. uh, You can set up a mailbox size allowment, allowing here or allocation. Um, maximum message size accepted and uh, an expiration date on deleted mails. I mean this is full email setup here. Um, the virtual mail domains, okay, mshome.net is set up in there already. I could add another if I like. I can actually activate ActiveSync if uh, somebody wants to use a device and connect to it, you know, like a Blackberry or, you know, an iPhone or something like that. 
There's a gray list as well uh, for gray listing. You know, for duration here, it's not enabled. Um, so I've got that set up. Well, not totally set up yet, but I've got it where I can set it up. I've got the capability. Uh, no queues currently set up, or nothing in the queue. Um, DNS, I've got that uh, also available to me. Okay. Um, I don't have a transparent DNS cache set up or anything like that, but I do have uh, the domain of mshome.net as a part of the DNS. Uh, there are currently no forwarders here because I'm really not connected to the internet. Uh, but if I were connected to the internet as a gateway, like 192.168.11, for instance, then I could add a forwarder so that if the DNS inherent in my DNS server couldn't locate, uh, couldn't match an IP address to a name given that was being looked up in a browser, for instance, then it would go out to the forwarder on the internet and do that for me. Um, DHCP is currently set up. There's no range currently set up yet, according to this, although it does appear that there is a range. All right, I do have a full firewall. Uh, I do have packet filtering capability and port forwarding. I've got two port forwarding set up right now, or two ports. Uh, ETH1 has the 8443 on the 161 address being port forwarded, which means the firewall now has a hole in it, which could, should be accepting outside requests on that IP address at that port uh, to display what we're looking at here. Uh, this is internal what you're seeing here. ETH0 is another interface I have set up at port 3389 at IP address 166 uh, which is the DHCP supplied address. The reason for that is I have um, XRDP which is a remote desktop uh, protocol client or server rather set up in uh, Zential 5.1, sitting there listening on that ad address at that port so that if I want to RDC into um, Zential, I can do that as well from Windows 10 using RDC. Okay, uh, let's go on down. I um, also have SNAP, which I don't have set up. That's the source network address translation rules that you can set up for network address translation. I've got a certification authority. Uh, if you go under the general tab, you can do a common name. So I've already got one set up, I think. Uh, yes, yeah, called Zential VM Authority Certificate from Zential VM. It's valid. Here was the date it was uh, actually created. Okay. I've got certificate set up in the services here. So I've got one set up for FTP, one set up for mail, another one for POP and IMAP. And then another one set up for the web administration, which is important. These are not enabled yet, so I'll need to enable those. Uh, and, uh, and when I do that, then I should be, if I enable that one, I should be able to go out on the web on the Win 10 box and access the same interface uh, via the web. All right, so uh, here's VPN setup. Uh, I've got servers and clients that I can set up in here for VPN, so I can get a list of servers set up there as well and clients here uh, so that I can add clients to the server itself so I can VPN and then I've got FTP capability I've disabled the anonymous access I've got personal directories that can be enabled here restricting the personal directories I can set up SSL and force it okay so that uh, it's secure under FTP so it's SFTP in other words so this is the Zentiel server uh, it's uh, a great little server. It's uh, very robust. It's very, um, very nice, actually. I mean, you can set up your own home network here very easily. Set up your own network on your small business. That's what it's designed for. So this has been a look at Zentiel 5.1 Linux server for small business. Have a nice day.